help. Okay, let's take a look. Here we have the limit as x approaching 0 of 1 over x minus 1 over x. I will just tell you if we push through into all the x's, we will run into trouble. But it's okay. This is what we can do. First, let's just combine them. And in order to do so, we will need a common denominator. So for the first one, I will have to multiply by x right here, right? So x here and also x here. And then for the second one, I will have to multiply by sine x here and then sine x here. So they will have the same denominator. And we can just write that down one time. And then on the top is x minus sine x. Okay, now we have this just one fraction. And if you put 0 into all the x's, we have 0 minus sine 0, which is just 0. And if you put 0 into here, here, we also get 0. We have 0 over 0. Well, it's bad because we cannot draw any conclusion yet, but it's also good because we can use Lapidus rule. So to use Lapidus rule for the 0 over 0 situation, Just take the derivative of the top, and then take the derivative of the bottom. For the top, the derivative of x is 1, minus the derivative of sin x is cosine x. Then for the bottom, well, this is x times sin x. So we have to use the product rule. Let's keep the first function, times the derivative of the second, derivative of sin is cosine x. And then we add the second function, which is sine x, and we multiply by the derivative of the first. The derivative of x is equal to 1. So that's what we have. Okay, now if we put 0 into all the x's, cosine 0 is 1. And we will just have 1 minus 1 on the top. Again, it's 0. If we put 0 into here, that will be 0. If you put 0 in here, that will be 0. So we have 0 over 0. <sighs> hmm, Lapidus rule again. Okay, let's try it. So, 0 over 0, use Lapidus rule one more time. Theoretically, you can use Lapidus rule as many times as you need to, as long as you know it's making progress. So right here, we are just hoping that it is making progress. Sometimes it might not be though, so you have to be aware of that. Okay, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of negative cosine, it will be positive sine. And because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, times that negative gives us positive. Now for this, product rule again. I'm going to keep this function, x, and then multiply by the derivative of the second, which will give us negative sine x, plus the second function, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. And then, this is just sine x. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So this is what we have. And be careful now. If we put 0 into all the x's, uh -huh, if we put 0 in here, this will give us sine 0. Okay, Over, that will give us 0 and perhaps the negative here, and then sine 0, that will be 0, yes. And then sine 0 is also 0, don't worry about it. But you know what, thanks to this cosine here, because the last thing is that we are adding cosine 0. So on the top, this will give us 0, but on the bottom, this is 0, this is 0, but this is 1. So we have 0 over 1. Hmm. What can we conclude? The answer is zero. Yeah. So thanks to this part, and it actually worked out pretty well. The answer is equal to zero. So hopefully this right helps.